But that leads us, this as well as the original one, leads us to the question how do we get the nth order correction to the wave function? So how do we get the wave functions? How do we get those? Yeah? You can use the ones we already have. We have a complete set. Precisely. We expand them in a complete set. Like we did last week. We expand wave function in a complete set and you will later on, when you come to uh, Metal Blessed Perturbation Theory, see that we actually, for metal blast perturbation here, we use exactly the same set of functions which we had last week. So, <coughs> we use this complete set of functions, um, expand them, and then we get some coefficients which are called j for being the basis function j, the basis state j, and then the n here is the order. So this is the numbering index of the zeroth order wave functions and that's the order of the correction. Um. Right, and that sort of is value shrouding of perturbation theory. Only Schrodinger perturbation theory. I have to insert this in my nth order equation up there. I, mean, I have to do two things. One is I want to insert it here or there and there in order to get expression for the energies. That I could do immediately but that doesn't really bring me any much further as long until I know what those coefficients are. And the only equation which I have around in order to determine those coefficients are my nth order Schrodinger equation. So in some way or another I have to try to find those coefficients from those equations. <coughs> so I insert my wave function in the nth order equation <coughs> which then makes it to look like this or zeroth order Hamiltonian, and now I have a sum over these j states with their coefficients, and that's what the nth order wave function, so it's the nth order coefficient, plus same, almost same story with the perturbation Hamiltonian, prime, same expansion, apart from now, now it's not the nth order coefficient, but it's the n minus first order coefficient. That's the left hand side and then the right hand side <coughs> I had a sum over from 0 to n over all orders in order to get and the energies of that order times the n minus i's order wave function uh, and that I expand again now again in j to set j and now I have the n my the coefficient j from this basis state but to the n minus i's order. Um, how do I get the coefficient now? Go back to that example with my vector. Here are the two axes and here are my vector a and obviously I can write the vector a in expanded in basis vectors. I have the unit vector along the x-axis, which is sort of here, the x, and I have a unit vector along the y-axis. These are two, my two basis vectors. And I want to have coefficients for those, so that's, okay, let's call them ax and ay. And then typically a representation of my vector a in that coordinate system you would write a is equal to ax ay. 
That's how you sort of typically write up a vector when you have chosen a coordinate system. I mean, the vector is there in the first place, then you put a coordinate system on top of it in order to get this. Now, how do I get that AX? I could measure the angle, yes, but that we're not one. We don't want to do that now. Well, I do what, what Jack said before. I take the dot product with, I project on the axis, I take the dot product, well, not here, I project here, on the axis, I, which is taking the dot product with the unit vector. <coughs> because when you do that here, you get AX times the dot product of the unit vector with itself, which is 1, plus AY, the dot product of the two unit vectors, but they are orthogonal, which is 0. So what comes out is AX. So in order to get the coefficient in front of one of the basis vectors, I have to take the dot product of my vector with that basis vector. So projecting against a particular basis vector will give me that coefficient. So I'll do the same and I project, project against the basis vector k. And that is hopefully going to give me C, K, and then nth order here. So if I do that, and I do a bit of, well, let's do it first. So I get sum over J, and then I get now a matrix element K, H0, and that was J, and coefficient J nth order plus, again, sum over j, k, h prime, j, coefficient, j, n minus first order. And then on the right hand side, I get a sum over, the same sum over the orders, i to n, w, i, sum over j, and now I get the overlap between k and j times this coefficient. Let's start here. That being the zeroth order wave function being our basis vectors, unit basis vectors, that's delta kj. which means that that summation over j collapses to the single term k. Because for all the other values of j, which are different than k, this is going to give, you, give us zero. So from this, we just get a single term back, which is c k n minus i. Um, The second thing is, I mean, we still have the sum of i here. Um, what, if, what if that order is zero? Then we have the coefficient of the k basis func basis vector basis state in zeroth order. But our zeroth order wave function, that's just zero. There's no k contribution to that. That's just one of the basis vectors. So in addition to this, we also have that zero k c k zeroth order is zero. And that means that, that we get from all this 
that we only get the sum over i equals to 0 up to n minus 1 because the nth order energy would go with the zeroth order wave function correction but that is zero because of this one so we have standing there w i c k n minus i s order on the right hand side now let's look on the left hand side what do we get there What do you got here? That's the matrix element of the zeroth order Hamiltonian with k and j, which are both eigenfunctions to this Hamiltonian. And the matrix of an operator in its own eigenfunctions is diagonal. I can also show that because if h acts on h zero acts on j. I get the energy Ej and J back and then I have, so this is Ej, K, J. Or I could write it, it's, actually I could write it, it's also Ek because I could left act the Hamiltonian to the left and then I get K back and Ek. But this is still delta Kj. So that summation also collapses to a single term because all the other, all the j's which are not k, this is going to be zero. And if j is k, it's one. So I get e k times well, times the coefficient c k nth order, the one I want to have. That's the one I'm looking for. Now what happens in the middle? Not much. There I can't do anything because this is this those states are not eigenfunction of this operator. So there's no trick I can play here. So I just get this one plus the sum over J K H prime J and that coefficient c and j minus 1. You can also have ej, if, you, if I let the Hamiltonian act to the right, I get ej and then I get j back and I get this overlap. But then the overlap is delta kj and I still have the summation over j. So the only term where I get something is if j is equal to k and I get I'm back to k. The other option is that you let it act to the left. The Hamiltonian acting on k gives, my, gives me ek directly. And then I just get this one in order to get rid of the summation. So both, both, uh, sort of both ways bring me to the same goal. Now I can make one trick more on this side and then I'm almost done. Because here I have a summation, I sum from 0 to n minus 1. 0 is I have the 0th order energy. Well, no. Yeah, I get the 0th order energy, but the 0th order energy is what we call E0. The 0th energy is, I mean, it's this one here, W0, and W0 is just the the energy of the lowest order perturbed state. So if I let that start from 1, I can separate the zeroth order term, which would be W0 times the uh, CKN coefficient. But W0 is, as I've written up there, is E0. And I'm sort of ready uh, to rewrite, just reorganize the equation, so I get the unknown, the one thing which I want to derive for, ckn. I mean, the goal of this was project against k in order to get this coefficient. I only have to isolate it on the left-hand side. Which means I have to move this one over to here, or, uh, or the other way around. 
Now I move this one over to there. In any case, I get E0 minus EK times coefficient CKN on one hand side. And on the other hand side, I then get um, this one sum over J K H prime J C J N minus one. Um, and then I get minus sum over I equals one to N minus one W I C K N minus I. And then I'm almost done. The only thing I have to do. Yes, thanks. The only thing I have to do now is to divide by this difference between the zero and energies. And then I get the final equation for the nth order coefficient. which is C K coefficient of the basis state K in the end order wave function is then a sum over here, this, a sum over J here, sum over J of K H prime J divided by E zero minus E K, zero minus E K, times c j n minus 1 minus a sum over orders i from 1 to n minus 1 n minus 1 the corresponding energy w i times a lower order coefficient divided by e0 times e k